Here's a question for you. Should your first property be an HMO? And if so, what sort of things should you really be considering? Hi, my name's Tony Law from Your First Four Houses, and I teach people how to build a small property portfolio that generates a great income for them so they can give up the day job if they wish, because they're now financially free. If this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to the channel and click that bell notification icon so that you don't miss out on any of the free content that I give you each and every week. So having your first investment property as an HMO, does that kind of make sense or is it just a little bit mad to even consider your first property being an HMO? I think most of us know the advantages of building an HMO-based portfolio. It simply comes down to a far greater cash flow compared to having single buy-to-let properties. And I've got to make it really clear from the outset, I'm very much pro HMOs. Uh, certainly they've massively helped me in terms of placing my income. Um, but it's got to be really, I've got to be really honest right from the outset and say there are a number of challenges with building an HMO based portfolio and very specifically that first one. So let's consider some of these right now. Well, the first thing to consider is that not many lenders will actually lend on, a, on, a, on an HMO if this is indeed your first property. So of course, you need to go and speak to an independent mortgage broker, somebody with access to the whole of the market, sit down with them and ask the question. This is assuming that you're going to buy that first HMO based property. There are other strategies that we could talk about that, where you could buy, build up an HMO based portfolio without buying, but if you're buying, go and speak to the mortgage broker. Now, if you are buying, HMOs are obviously going to be, generally speaking, a more expensive property than a single let, which is probably going to mean you're going to need to put more money in than buying a single let. That again, may be a consideration for you. HMOs tend to be more hands-on, whereas single lets tend to be more hands-off. So you are generally going to be going over to this property more, especially if you are actually managing it. Which leads me on to, do you like dealing with tenants? If not, then you're going to have to factor in some kind of management of the property. Um, now, single lets, I've got quite a few single lets, to be honest. I don't really do anything with those. The kind of the tenants stay there, they're very happy. They're nice properties to be fair, but I don't really do anything. They're very happy. They just pay the money each and every month and, and I get a, a small cash flow over and above the mortgage amount. Um, but other than that, I just leave them alone, very hands off. Whereas with HMOs, you tend to be far more hands on. There's more legislation that you need to take into consideration. And you need to be up to date with this. This is so important in this day and age, especially if you are self-managing. There's a far higher uh, or far greater chance that it's gonna be more wear and tear with that property if it's an HMO. You are gonna be going over to that property more often, which leads me on to the fact that you really should have a handyman, somebody that you can just pick up the phone, give them a call and they'll go over with a key. They'll always have a key and they'll go over and do any maintenance work for you. So, if this is your first investment property, to be really honest with you, my suggestion is, and I know some people are gonna disagree with me on this, but my suggestion is, make that first property a vanilla type buy to let, first of all. Now, I know a lot of people are gonna argue with that, but that's just my personal view, make that first one a vanilla buy to let, rather than an HMO, in my opinion. But really importantly, focus on putting your money into that property and getting that money back out again as quickly as you possibly can, say within six to 12 months, so that you have that property in your portfolio, but without any of your own money in there. Now, if you're not sure how to do that, can I suggest you watch this video here? I'll also put the description in the box below, or rather this is a free mini course. Uh, if you haven't watched it already, if you haven't taken my free mini course, please do it. There's no charge and it will teach you exactly how you can put your money into properties and get it back out again quickly. And as I say, I'll put it in the description box below. But if you do want to go down the HMO route, that's absolutely fine. But can I make a suggestion? Look at doing a rent to rent type uh, strategy, first of all, with that first property. Why? Well, you're gonna learn so much from doing that. And it's also a really great way to check if there's enough demand in the area that you're looking for. And also, perhaps more importantly, check if you really like that. It's so important though, wherever you're actually investing, that you focus on one thing, in my opinion, and that is demand. 
only invest if there's a, a, a decent demand in HMOs, if there's a decent demand in the area that you're looking to, to, to invest in. Because honestly, that takes so much pressure off. If you're fighting to find tenants, and definitely in some parts of the country, it is a real challenge finding tenants, whereas in other parts of the country where there's good demand still, it's quite easy to actually rent those rooms out. You've only got to put an advert out there and boom, you'll get inundated. One other option I just wanted to float by you if you're considering single lets, HMOs. One other thing you might want to consider is maybe, just maybe, buying your own home or buying your next home and buying it where you're going to get yourself either a really good discount or you're going to add value in some substantial way. And again, check out that mini course which will teach you exactly how to do that. And then maybe use the government's rent a room type scheme. Now, if you're not aware of this, this gives you the ability to earn seven and a half thousand pounds completely tax free at the moment. I'll put the link to that in the description box below. You might want to check that out as a slightly unusual third strategy. And as I say, when you're going to buy your property that you're going to live in, maybe you're going to buy that below market value as I've done many times, or maybe you're going to add substantial value as I've done many times. Um, so I'm, I'm suggesting that can still be an investment type property. But as I say, government rent a room scheme, definitely worth looking at. But I want to really emphasize, I don't want to put you off HMOs, I really don't. I just want to open your eyes to some of the challenges that may be out there. I know some trainers sort of tend to, to sort of flag it up as being, it, it's relatively easy to build an HMO based portfolio. I just want to point out that it's not as easy, perhaps, as some people might suggest it is. In my completely free online property mini course, I teach you how to build a small portfolio of properties without needing to put big deposits into each and every deal. Simply click the link here on the description box below to find out more.